Hello everybody, it's Amanda. How are you doing? Today is the 27th of January 2020 and I've spent the morning doing the video on the coronavirus and it is uploading. I have just to say that um, it always takes a little while to um, I have to stitch it together basically because um, I just do I have to stitch the four bits together and that take that's the longest time that a video for me takes to get it uploaded and uh, I just put all the parts together and you know there's, an, there's a piece of software now stitching it together and it came out that it will take three hours and 33 minutes so there's a nod to the Christ consciousness energy and I do talk about the Christ consciousness energy within that video. So uh, anyway, it should be up tonight, UK time. So what time is it now? I don't know. Oh yeah, I've moved my clock. Uh, probably three or four hours time, hopefully. But don't hold me to that. It depends on uh, the internet and speed and things like that. Um, anyway, I'm pleased with what came through. Because I'm sitting here still with the cards in front of me, um, I thought I would pull some cards for us for the week ahead. So I've taken the cards out of the deck that I've used for my video this morning, just because I don't want the same ones to come up again. I've talked about them a lot. Let's just give the cards a shuffle and let's see what's going to come through for you for this week. So let's ask Archangel Metatron, what are the themes that are coming through for the week commencing the 27th of January. The last week of January, goodness sake. Okay, we've got to appreciate the days and the weeks because they just fly by. We need to start appreciating our lives more, I think, all of us. It's so fleeting. Um, I will give a shout out to the basketball player Kobe Bryant, who um, passed in a helicopter crash last night with his daughter and some others. Um, rest in peace. I didn't know who he was, to be perfectly honest, because I don't follow basketball. So his name didn't mean a lot to me when I heard about his death. But I appreciate that he was well loved by many people. And um, many people, you know, are hurting or grieving. And um, most notably, of course, his family and those who worked with him and who knew him personally. But of course, there's always a ripple out effect as well when you're a big name and you've affected lots of people's lives and it can hurt, can't it? So sending anybody that's hurting today a, a hug and a cuddle and um, sending him light on his journey. I noticed within about an hour of that news coming in last night, a couple of psychics put up videos tuning in to what had happened. I think that is so disrespectful. You know, there needs to be some ethics and, you know, ethics with this work. Just think that was appalling thing to do. Let him just transition and adjust. Okay, let's see what this week is bringing, guys, for all of us. So turning attention to you. The card of fortitude. So it's a week where we're being asked to be strong, to show fortitude. Fortitude is really another word for strength in many ways. I have to say that the energy of the animals is everywhere today. I brought through quite a lot about the animals in today's video on coronavirus. Bella has been very vocal all morning, including during the video. And including last night, getting us up three times in the night to make the point about animals and us needing to hear what they have to say. So here on the card of fortitude, we've got the energy of the wolf. The It looks like an eagle. and It looks like it might be an otter. My, my ear just popped, so that's a confirmation that it might be the otter. Um, oh, and it's also got a lion as well. So we've got four animals there. Oh no, and we've also got bison and buffalo. Okay, there's quite a lot going on in this picture actually, if you look at the card. Some of the animals you can see, some that you can't. And what, they're, what I'm being shown in my mind's eye is that 
The animal kingdom, of course, is made up of animals of all sizes, of all colours, of all different types, very much like the human race. We sort of identify as just being human, but actually within the human race, increasingly, <laughs> there are many varieties of what it is to be human. Many, many of us walking through different dimensional realities and holding different frequencies. And to be honest, the 3D human is very different from the 4D human, who is very different from the 5D human, who is very different from the 7D human. It's interesting that most people seem to leap from 5D to 7D. What happened to 6D? Maybe 6D is just like a stepping stone, like 4D is. I, I personally feel they're just like stepping stone energies because I feel much more pulled to the seventh dimensional energy um, now. You know, it's like a lot of us are holding the fifth dimensional energy quite well. We're still, you know, dipping back into 3D a lot of the time. But, you know, increasingly 5D is our natural resting place now. So you always need another goal <laughs> and 7D is on the horizon. Um, so it's just almost as though the animals are just showing the huge variety of human beings that are now walking this planet. Um, some, it's almost like I've got the animal kingdom speaking here in my head as, a, as an oversoul group, are saying some of the human beings on our planet are walking around still in quite a ne Neanderthal state. Okay. Um, and Neanderthal man, of course, what he, he learned how to be able to stand and, you know, walk and talk and all the rest of it. But, you know, there's still a lot that are almost behaving in ways that are pre-Neanderthal. Yet the, at the other end of the spectrum, the animals are showing me this new, it's beautiful, this new enlightened human who is fully in their light body, who, who literally are like a different species but yet you're still called human. <laughs> but it actually, what they're saying is it's almost like a human hybrid type energy. Um, it's like we're humans, but not. There's, uh, but it's about remembering all the different strands of energy that have lain dormant within us for so long, whether they be angelic, galactic, or whatever else, um, as well as the animal energy that we all still have as well. So we're almost like we're creating a new hybrid here very much like in this card, we've got the we've got these animals and they all sort of merge. So that's the first message that I'm picking up, which is just maybe I'm being asked to explain that to us because this is in our personal reading for this week. I think it's trying to give you a level of understanding that some of the people that you meet, even though they've got, you know, eyes and nose and mouth, hair and all the rest of it, and they might wear a suit. It's literally is almost as though you're talking to people of a different species. The difference is becoming very, very great between us all. Um, and those of us who are sort of on the front line in terms of trying to evolve to whatever the next thing is, are being encouraged to just have some fortitude and strength as these changes ramp up within the physical body. Um, the differences around us in terms of our life and how we're viewing things, the attitude that we take to things, the perspective that we have to things. Um, it's just becoming increasingly very, very different from people who aren't holding that frequency. And um, it's like a never the twain shall meet. It's like it's becoming mu the, the much bigger gap between the different dimensions. So give people some slack who are maybe not at the same frequency as you are. They don't have the same apparatus within themselves. They don't have the same eyes to see what you see. They don't have the same ability to speak with peace that you may have. They, don't, they can't hear what you hear. They, um, they're operating very much at a lower frequency level and responding at a lower frequency level. Um, so it's almost like stop trying to understand it so much or them. Just accept it for what it is. It is what it is, is what Metatron is saying. You just have to show fortitude. Um, the otter. I wonder what the otter is all about. I'm going to look up the meaning of otter on that card. <clears throat> right. 
They're a symbol of family, healing, playfulness and ingenuity. Um, very creative, full of ideas. Okay, that's the otter. So those qualities may be coming to the fore uh, this week. Uh, when otter swims up as your spirit animal, it's time to stop swimming against the current. Um, otter belongs to those who see life as a playground. Um, call in otter as your power animal when your family needs to unite. It, sort of that's what I'm saying, really. It's like, do you know when you were at school? Do you remember when you were at like infant school or junior school? And I certainly remember that there were playgrounds and there was like the infant's playground where all the little kids played and they had toys to match their age group and um, their ability. And then you had the playground for the elder kids, you know, and of course everyone wanted to be in the playground for the older kids because there were more interesting things to do there. And um, there were sort of places you could go and hide and uh, escape and uh, all the rest of it. Um, and that's what I'm being shown. It literally is like we've got different playgrounds at play. And um, Metatron showed me this analogy of some of the people in our lives. It's like we're in this bigger playground in terms of 5D. And then at break time when the bell rings, and funnily enough, I've got a bell on my desk. Some of the kids from the younger group, the infant's playground, are coming up to the big fence that separates and they're causing a bit of mischief, you know? Um, they're trying to sort of cheat their way into the bigger playground. You know, they want a bit of that. They want to be there in this more uh, expansive, open space, but yet they don't want to play by the rules. What do I mean by the rules? I mean just by embodying the light. You know, it's like I can cheat my way in. I can weave my way in through this little little bit of gap in the fence. No, you can't. So, um, appreciate the people who are around you who are in your group, who are in your tribe, who get you, who have made the leap with you. Okay, that's the first message. Let's see what else we get. Perception. Because hmm. what was I just saying? It's as though people's perceptions at the moment is just so... It, to me, it's become so clear, the difference between these different realities that we all have. Maybe it was always there. But maybe just with this 2020 vision we're all getting this year, it's just so much clearer to see what's really going on. Um, because I'm a, on social media, that's how you're watching me, it's, it's so apparent to me. I can see it so clearly now. And it's not judging anything as right or wrong. It's just the differences in perception. You can think of almost any um, subject under the sun. Uh, and it's almost as though you can group people into groups in terms of say there is a fire say there's something that happens one set of people are going to be viewing it it's because of this because as princess diana said in my channeling last week that fits the narrative they want it to fit that is their version of reality it's their truth but yet the person in the playground next to them the same event will play out but yet they see a completely different thing they're shown a completely different version of it not right not wrong just different um reflections actually from the same diamond there's a multifaceted as we enter a multi-dimensional world everything is multifaceted we are multifaceted but equally subjects topics um they have many different versions of what can be the truth so in this, it's almost like in this playground, everybody's reading the book that says, this is why it is as it is, okay? And then in the other playground, it's like, no, that's not the truth. I'm reading this book and this is, this is, this is my version of the truth. And I guess what almost we need down the line of the fence is tolerance, isn't it? Tolerance. But 
as I say, I, I just see it so clearly on social media now. It's almost like within, you can almost see it within hours of a subject breaking. It's like, you know, the people who are going to be using it to expand that particular narrative that they're on, you know, keep going with the storyline that they're on. And then somebody else will get something completely different and they'll be doing their narrative of what they're, and it's not, it's fine. It's fine to have those differences. But I think what's increasingly happening is we're finding our tribe. We're finding our tribe. You know, these are the people I gel with. It's always been like that, but it just feels as though it's becoming even more so. So perception. What else? This week. <laughs> Surface. It's really tying into what I've just said, that we're very being able to clearly see um, the difference in perceptions that people have surfacing. The only problem I ever have with anybody is if they come on and say, my way is the only way to see a particular thing. Okay, I've always been clear on that. You don't have to agree with me. You don't have to watch me. You don't have to listen to anything I ever say ever again. Um, because my perception might not be your perception. But don't judge me for having that, okay? You're just not resonating with my frequency. And it's the same when we see people. We have to get to this place because it feels as though that helps to heal all the divisions in our world, but equally within our families, within our communities, within our workplaces. But it's almost as though we're being gifted this ability to perceive much more clearly, ah, I can see why you're saying that. Okay, yeah, well, I knew you'd say that about whatever it is, whether it's um, something that happens politically, whether it's a world event, whether it's linked into the climate, you know? What goes, what else? Let's have another three cards from this deck. We've got the card of balance. <laughs> Two opposing forces, okay? Two different opinions. Somehow we have to get to a point where we respect people's different opinions. In my video that I've just made on coronavirus, I talk about plant-based diet versus eating animals. It's a hugely contentious subject. Last time I even went there, I got so viciously attacked. <laughs> I don't think I've even spoken about it for another couple of years until today. Well, I needed to do it today because it's in context of the message that comes through on the video. But there'll be people that are just like, you can't say that. In both camps, actually. Some people will think I haven't gone far enough, i.e. you need to be vegan and that is it, or vegetarian, that is it. You know, why aren't you? And other people will be, hold on a minute, you're telling me that I should be going more plant-based, but, but I can still, you know, I don't want to do that. It's like two opinions, two perspectives, balance middle ground again trying to hold the middle ground where is the middle ground so take that down into your everyday life maybe you have people in your family who've got very different opinions about something the way something should be done okay how shall, how somebody should behave what the next step is you need to listen to both you somehow need to find the middle ground the card of formation. What goes with the card of formation? The card of preservation. Hmm. They almost feel like completely conflicted energies, don't they? Because on one hand, we're being told, hang on to, preserve what needs to be preserved. You know, hang on. And then this other card formation is like, what can we create? How can you create anything? How can you form anything new if you're hanging on the whole time to the old? The whole point of this is this is a skeleton hanging on to what they want to hang on to. That's how long they've been hanging on to it.
going to pull another card to go with that. What, what, what goes with that energy of preservation? I'll go over and above what I've just said. What goes with that energy of preservation? Consistency. Preservation and consistency. So it's along the lines of preserve what, only what is essential. Preserve only what is essential in your life. Hold on to only what is essential in your life. Because to me, these are cards of growth. This is the energy that's coming in. I know what this is. This is the Pluto-Saturn thing again, isn't it? Because they are, they're it's like a push-pull energy and we've got it the whole year. It didn't just happen on the 12th of January, you know, which was when the conjunction was. Um, it's this, do I hold on? Do I hang on? Do I preserve? And how much do I do that? Everything or just a little bit? Or do I just welcome in liberation and freedom and expansion and just let go of all of it? And it isn't clear. I don't think it's meant to be clear quite yet, to be perfectly honest. This is the whole lesson of the Pluto-Saturn thing. It's a dance between these two opposing forces. They are within us and they are around us in the wider world. We're getting to grips with it. So it may well be that whatever came up for you around the 12th of January, with the conjunction completely exact, whatever in your life you were feeling as though you were being asked to let go of or create, it feels as though this is a week where it seems to come back around a little bit again for another look at it, to try to balance it out, to allow another layer to basically surface. But it feels as though we've got... You know, a little bit of time has gone since the 12th. Not a great deal of time, but a little bit of time has gone since the 12th. It's as though it's becoming a little bit clearer. It's still not clear, but, you know, the card of perception is saying it's becoming a little bit clearer. OK, there's, there's a bit more of the story surfacing. I mean, I've noticed that in my life, to be honest, within the last 48 hours, actually. It's as though... It was actually something that I was thinking, maybe I'm done with that. Maybe I don't want to do that anymore. I'm starting to actually look at it and think, actually, if I just put a bit more effort and energy into that, it may very well be worth preserving. And through that, there could be an enormous growth that comes. And equally, there's another area of my life where I was thinking, I really want that. I really want that. But now I'm thinking, no, just let it go. Maybe you just need to let it go. But it's almost as though it isn't decision time. It doesn't have to be now we make the decision. These are energies that we're all wrestling with and dancing with through the year. But it is becoming clearer. It's definitely becoming clearer. Let's pull a card from another deck now. And I want to go to the Self Love Oracle by Janet Tree. Janet sent me these cards a while back and they're very beautiful. Let's have a look at what card we get for ourself, how we can look after ourselves when we've got this whole... You see, the thing about this Saturn-Pluto push-pull type energy is it's quite well hidden. <laughs> um, by that, what I mean is the energetics within yourself in terms of why am I feeling like this? Today I felt all right and now, now I'm not feeling okay. You know, what, why? Why, why, am I, why today is it okay and yesterday it wasn't? It's, because, it's like Metatron saying they're almost like tectonic plates that are just moving and shifting the whole time, you know? And we're doing this dance trying to keep our feet on, on both. We're getting used to the energy. Okay, let's have a card. For this week, self-love, self-healing. What do we need, Metatron? We need space is the first thing he's saying to me. So I'm just waiting till one card becomes obvious it's the right one.
coexist. You do not need to win or harm anyone to be as you are. Appreciate diversity as part of nature. Variety is the spice of life. Well, A, that goes back to the message I said at the start about the uh, different species of human that's sort of walking around at the moment. We're all being asked to coexist with each other. We're not being, you know, you do not need to win or harm anyone to be as you are. Appreciate diversity as part of nature. Variety is the spice of life. But I also feel it's as though we're being asked to coexist with these two energies this this Pluto energy of like I just want to let go I want you know I it, this needs to be brought to an end it's like the destroyer type energy I've had enough of this I just want to clear clear slate and then this other energy Saturn which is just like no build build keep going structure order somehow we've got to find a way for these two energies to coexist within ourselves um, and to be and to be at peace with it, okay. And I do feel there's a message coming through here about it's about taking it day by day. Um, on the bottom of the deck, we've got dream bigger, dream bigger. Sometimes we limit ourselves to small picture goals due to insecurity or fear of failure. Failure isn't certain until we give up. Allow yourself to start building what you really want. Co-creators will come. So we've got the card of co-creation in terms of dream bigger. And we've got the card of coexist. Co. Um, working together seems to be something else that's coming through this week as well. Interesting cards. Let's pull a final one from the Metatron deck and then I'm going to get this uploaded. Oh, new dawn. Okay, that's come through so many times. New dawn, new beginning. Uh, welcome back. We're coming out of the fog, you know, the dark tunnel. The light is there. How many times have I shown you this card? New beginnings. New beginnings can be scary. New beginnings can be like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to do it. I don't know where to go. I don't know who to talk to. <laughs> I don't know what to do. But yet within that, there is just this amazing potential. Um, we're all welcoming in the new. And that's a positive card for this week. Welcome back to the dawn. The other thing I want to say about this card is I woke up this morning uh, I hadn't had a very good night's sleep because of Bella waking me up three times, but um, I, I then put the news on and there was an article and I was told this a couple of years ago by, I think it was an Italian doctor and uh, it's a piece of news today and it's talking about the power of being out in daylight, in the morning daylight, the first few hours when the, when the dawn comes, it's so healing for the body. It helps to regulate your system in terms of sleep patterns so I also think there's this thing about if you can sit in the new dawn energy and allow your eyes, you know, allow your eyes to take in that light. Because when your eyes take in the light of the new dawn, it helps to regulate your um, your systems within your body that regulate sleep. But I think it's also doing far more. It's actually regulating and balancing. Um, where's the card of balance? It's, it's helping to balance out everything that's going on around us at the moment. OK, much love. I'll get this uploaded. And tonight, as I say, the longer video will be up on YouTube and on Facebook. I'll put it here as well. Much love. Bye bye.